what I believe Dubas b- wants to see and what I believe Babcock believes can work. Right. Like Babcock would, I think, probably thinks the way you think. We're not that talented, guys. We can't run and gun and go. I right. don't want to coach that way. I don't think it's going to work. Right. Where I think Dubas is like, I think that is what we are. Right. And listen, there are some guys who are, are not. How many guys have exceeded expectations through 20 games? Like, the only one that screams at me is Mikheyev because I was totally ignorant to him. I didn't know what he was. So I'm like, yeah, I've been kind of impressed with him. Justin Hall, because he didn't play a year ago. Correct. You know, Kerfoot's been fine, but he's just blending into the team now. But I haven't seen anyone, like, exceed expectations. Here's the challenge for Cal Dubas. He has no experience with anything that says, I know what works. He has a philosophy. He has a belief. And that's really good. And that's really nice. But you have no experience. That's right. It's great to say I want to be this. It's great to say I want to do this. It's great to say that I have this philosophy and I think this is what we can do. Okay. Doesn't he have to be committed to it, though? Sorry. Go ahead. Doesn't he have to be committed to what he believes, though? I'm not. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with being committed to it. Just understand that you're committed to something without any basis of experience. Right. Right. Well, Any it's probably base at of different experience. levels, but this is the National Hockey League. At what point do you have to say, and I think Anthopoulos talked about it when he was in Toronto. He was big into numbers, and then he got guys like Donaldson and Tulowitzki, and he said the value of that in the clubhouse, it was it was really important. So how do you kind of get a blend or a mix, or what's the pressure point where you say I, I, you change what you're thinking here? Well, I, that, that's part of gaining experience, right? Like, right. we all have beliefs, and y'all, it's, it's good to have beliefs and a philosophy of how you want to play and what you believe in, right? But when you don't have any discernible experience, you know, knowing, okay, maybe this is the time to shift, or maybe this is the time to double down, right? Like, and that's, that's part of having a, a, an inexperienced general manager, and you have to, you're, you're going to grow with them. I mean, right. I, I'm not saying that as a negative, but that's a reality of what they're dealing with. Theo Epstein did the same thing when he went to Chicago. He said, you know, I, there were some things that I had to change. The father, the founder, the inventor of sabermetrics, Bill James. If anybody wants to go and understand the sabermetrics and numbers and analytics, go read Bill James's stuff. Because Bill James has been as balanced as balanced can be for years. Well, he's so- the guy, but he's, a lot of other people talk about analytics and sabermetrics and all this stuff. Right. You want to go and study the guy. Study mm-hmm. the guy who's the best, and that's Bill James. Right. And well, he's always said there's a balance, leading. Jeff. He's always said there's a balance. What you need to have is the knowledge so that you can understand what you want to use at any particular point in time. Yeah, and I don't know if that's been brought up enough because, you know, I, I guess it's, it might be deemed unfair to Kyle or what have yeah. you, but he, he's never been an NHL GM. He's never, he's, it's never happened. Just because right. you're an American Hockey League GM or a GM in the OHL means nothing once you get to the NHL level and you're dealing with agents and other GMs who you know are vultures. Right. You're dealing with egos. You're dealing with guys who are like, I don't have to do anything that I don't want to do. And when you look at it, you know, has he done some, some quality things? Sure. Is yeah. he implementing a philosophy that he believes will work? Right. I hope so. I mean, that's the job. But he had never negotiated contracts before. Let's right. be honest, it didn't go so well for him, like, early on. The biggest mistake that's been glaring in terms of a player personnel was trusting a guy who won something for you with the Marlies over a bona fide pro, Garrett right. Sparks over McElhaney. Right. And they're still dealing with that problem. Well, here, but he's learning, but you're, this team's supposed to be winning. People are impatient, and right. you've got a GM, to be fair to him, where you're like, maybe, maybe he's got to have some time well, here, here's to figure a, this yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Can okay, I just, I just want to, yeah, just ahead. real quick, I just, which is what we're talking about. Maybe Matthews needs more time. Maybe right. Marner needs more time, right? Like, but no, but we're talking. Not November, though. Yeah, but wait a second. I'll give you April and May. Steve Eisenman was 32 years old when he won his first cup. And I'm telling you what, in 1995, when he was all of 30, there was a lot of talk about him being traded. Because, oh, you couldn't win with him. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not suggesting. I'm just saying that, like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of inexperience in their organization. Yeah. And learning through it and growing through it, that, that's something you have to accept. When you, when you name Kyle, the G, you better be ready to, to live with, with the learning curve. Well, and what's interesting about that, the guy who is most stable and has the longest tenure is the coach yep, who right. we're talking about all the time. Right. He's been a coach in the NHL for 20 years. He is, and he sees the team a certain way. What I was going to 
throw out there because I, I got a little negative on the construction of the team. But, <laughs> no, I did. No, but you're being val- it's I'm valid. Just, I'm I don't just think saying. that was like, negative. It's, it's I think that saying. was what I call I'm, it realistic. Yeah. I'm trying to They're be realistic on team right now. Right now, but that's what I'm saying. If the, if the man, and you've been in management, if, you've, if you sit back and go, I like the way the team is constructed, you just said it. Who's playing at or above what their capabilities are? Maybe Matthews. Not maybe. I'd say Matthews mm-hmm. is at least play. I think the point production, I still believe there's more there from the player, the overall game, and, and a lot of these guys. So they may be saying, they're saying the right thing. So you pointed out yesterday. They give you 35 minutes of good hockey, but the other 25, it yes. looks like they're just trying to... So he may be saying, let's see if they can put 60 together. Let's see what this team looks like when we are healthy and we've got guys playing up to their potential because this is the the bad part of it right now. And sometimes people do make knee-jerk reactions when things aren't going so well and the pressure is, is squeezing from the outside. So that's sometimes where you do have to take a step back and, and, and breathe for a second. I saw that from Kyle today. I, I said, I thought there was poise in, in what he speaks very well and he's a, uh, he's a poised individual. But I wonder if that's the, the type of narrative that's going on behind the closed doors from the management group. May not be from the coach's staff, coaching staff or inside the dress room, but from management, they may be saying, we think there's more there. We just need these players to live up to what we're, we're putting out there. I understand all of that, but right. I think at the beginning of the year, we described them as a top six or seven team, and a successful season would be winning a round in the playoffs. Right. So to go from that to saying, everybody calm down here, there's growing that has to be involved. Right. That's two different messages. So which one is it? Well, and listen, they're not alone. Calgary's doing the same thing. Vegas is doing the same thing. But like... Calgary, Vegas lost to Chicago at home last night. Now, the Leafs lost to Chicago as well, but Calgary lost to Dallas at home. Like, those are the, those three teams I had in the top eight in the league, Toronto, Vegas, and Calgary. Now, yeah. that doesn't mean anything for each individual team that the other guys are going through the same struggles. Right. But, you know, I guess from that standpoint, you can say it's still early. I, if you still If you believed in them on October 1st, which is something I've said countless times over the past week and a half, I still believe in them now. But I don't have as much confidence today as I did just, on October 1st. But if you're being realistic and you're looking, like, and I, I, I'm, I'm not saying pull people out of the lineup, but there were times where I've looked at this team, I'm like, yeah, they're good, but they're not. I think their expectation is exceeding what their reality is. Maybe it's somewhere in between. Like, if you think, there's no doubt in my mind they're a playoff team. I'm not saying that. But I didn't think they there's were. There's doubt gonna, in my mind. Well, I don't think they were going to be at. at uh, the, I didn't think they were going to win the Atlantic. Well, I yeah. thought Tampa was going to, and right, but Tampa hasn't been off to the greatest right. spot either. But. I think Tampa's a different animal, and they've got games in hand, and they've got, they played on the road a lot. There's a lot of excuses that are built in there. But just looking at the Leafs, that team, I think there may have had to been a step back to move forward with some of these guys. And the defensive core, Tyson Berry on paper looks a lot better, but they're not playing any better. No, well, and that's another one where Dubas is – the players got to answer for it. Like, Tyson Berry's a vet. He's been in the league for a long time. It's a contract year. He spoke on it today. He said it's weighing on him, and he's never sure. dealt with playing poorly in Toronto. Playing poorly in Colorado is a little bit different than playing poorly in Toronto. But that was the big move by Dubas. That was his biggest acquisition was Tyson Berry. Mm-hmm. And through 20 games, it hasn't worked. I'm going to go back to Jeff. I'm going to go back to what Jeff said. You know what? You know, it was nice. Kyle was very poised, very articulate, very nice. You know what? You come out and you're nine, seven, and four, and you got all the issues they have. You know what? We got to be better defensively in our defensive zone. That's coaching. We got to be better on the power play and the penalty killing. You know, that's on the players, that's on our systems and how we do it. And we got a lot of players that aren't playing up to their level. We need them to be better. Right. That's the message. Right. It's not like, oh, we need time. It'll all work out when we get our injuries back. A GM needs to see his team as it is. Not as he hopes that it is, or that he wishes that it is, or if everything was perfect how it is. He needs to see it how it is. Well, That's the message. As a GM, <laughs> I mean, don't you take it personally when you invest in guys and they don't pay it back for you? And Craig, we talked about it earlier. I, I guarantee you there was a message to the players that wasn't so friendly as it was to the That's, media. Yeah, I agree. With, with the day off today and there afterwards, it was like, oh, yeah, you know, we just got to give him time. I'm pretty sure somebody went in there and said, I don't know what the hell you guys think's going on out there, but it is not close to being good yeah. enough. Yeah. And then they, they'll go outside and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're patient, but 
I'm pretty sure somebody got their ass chewed out today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And a that's bunch of them. Yeah. Sure. That's I, handling. Agreed, right? You guys know, as they should have. That's handling right. the market properly, Correct. too. I, do, I don't discredit them for that. I no, think no, neither it's, do I. They got to be careful with everything they say and everything they do, and they have to exude confidence, even if it's completely disingenuous. Yeah. But, you know, that's that's probably smart practice from a PR perspective. Yeah, the internal message. That's what I want. Exactly. That it has to be strong. That's and right. There's no more. The coach takes offense to that because he knows that he's responsible too. And yep. when somebody above him comes in and he's standing there in his tracksuit and everyone's getting chewed out, he knows he's a part of it. He's not separate, separated. And yeah. it's like, you're doing a great job over there. He's included in that message. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you said everybody has blood on their hands. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, absolutely. Everyone's culpable.